Guys, here's some not so great 2020 election news. This is from 538, which uh, they've they've made their share of mistakes. But uh, here's why I, I picked this article just because it tells us who's in and who's out of the second Democratic debate. So here you go. First draw includes 10 candidates, Michael Bennett, uh, Steve Bullock, Bill de Blasio, John Delaney, who has no self-awareness whatsoever. The fact that this guy is still in the race is insane. Tulsi Gabbard, Kristen Gillibrand, John Hickenlooper. Same thing I just said about John Delaney applies to John Hickenlooper. Jay Inslee, Tim Ryan, who also, once again, wow, that guy humiliated himself. Uh, well, rather, Tulsi Gabbard humiliated him, but it was his fault. And Marianne Williamson, uh, hopefully she has a stronger closer next time. She did pretty well in that first debate, minus the closer. But anyway, second draw list includes six candidates. Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg. Uh, Julian Castro, Amy Klobuchar, Beto O'Rourke, Stand on Something, Stand for Nothing, and Andrew Yang. The final draw includes four candidates, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren. Mike Gravel made the threshold, but they still excluded him. And here's their bullshit reason why. All right, so here we go. Former Alaska Senator Mike Gravel will not make the stage, even though he reportedly has hit the donor threshold. He has. No reportedly necessary there. He hit the donor threshold. Because the DNC's tiebreaker rules favor those who have met the polling requirement, and he's the only candidate who is qualified via donors alone. So because of more bullshit DNC rules... Which, by the way, they, they will make these up on the spot. They will make these up as they go along. They've done it before. And what's their main agenda? Their main agenda is to make sure that any peace candidate gets off that stage as soon as possible. Or, in this case with Mike Ravel, doesn't get on the stage at all. So he met the threshold. The teens running his campaign, running his Twitter, worked tirelessly to make sure he met that threshold. He met it. And full disclaimer, I'm one of them. I donated to Mike Gravel. I've given to Tulsi, Bernie, and Gravel. Uh, I've given to all three. And even though the people have spoken and want him on that debate stage, the DNC still, with their bullshit rules, are saying he can't be on by the polls that, that, that they stand behind. These are the same polls that call Joe Biden the front runner. So... This is so incredibly typical. This is so incredibly typical. Uh, we've seen this happen time and time. This happened in 2008. This happened in 2012. It's happening. It happened in 2016. It's happening now in 2020. The DNC, the, the fact that Democratic is in their name is such a brutally cruel irony. Just just a cruel irony there that the word democratic is in their name. And the whole reform, all the reform did was they can cheat later. They have to wait later to cheat. The superdelegates have to come in later. We have to, if it goes to a second ballot, the superdelegates come in. And what are we going to do in the meantime? We're going to do everything in our power to make sure it goes to a second ballot. That's why they have this clown car of candidates who are indistinguishable from each other. So many of these candidates, they are indistinguishable from each other. But they're all there. Why are they all there? Why should all of them be running? And they're all trying to trick the public into making them think they're making people think they're more like Bernie. Well, why, why do you have to trick the public? Why not just, why shouldn't Bernie just be the person then? Well, because they're not like Bernie or Tulsi. They're going to do what the establishment wants them to do. So they have to try to win the people over. So it goes to a second ballot. So that the superdelegates get to pick the nominee again. And then chances are, if they get their establishment chosen one, that establishment chosen one is going to go on to lose to Donald Trump. And the DNC is still not going to change. Why aren't they going to change? Well, because... The Democratic establishment, and when I say establishment, I don't mean the progressives that are trying to dem enter. I mean the establishment itself is set up so that winning is not the first priority. 
The first priority, making sure the donors are happy. Happy. Second priority, stifling progressive, which goes into priority number one, making the donors happy. Third priority, maybe we'll beat a Republican or two. Winning ain't the first priority. Why? Because on the Democratic side, whether they win or not, the gravy train keeps running. The Republicans, they're the party for the 1% on the surface. For them, it's on the surface. So they don't have to hide. So there you go. Another, for instance, of a peace candidate being kept off the stage. Get your news on with Rhonda. Do you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Rhonda. Do you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make